Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. My name is Mike and if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for tuning in. I do hope you enjoyed this video because this video is all about my retro collection of vintage Seikos. For those who know me know I've got a bit of a thing for Seiko and it's pretty evident from what you can see in front of you because this is the bulk of my um, automatic um, collection. I've still got quite a few digitals and I've still got quite a few automatics as well that I haven't actually restored yet. So uh, as you can see, I think I've got a bit of a problem uh, and I want to go through a load of these. It's going to be um, probably a two part video because there's so many and I want to show you them all. Uh, and what I intend to do is try to uh, tell you a little bit about what I may have done to that particular watch, maybe show you a before photograph as well if I've done some case work or, or, or something to enhance the, the look of the watch. Um, and then sort of tell you which movement might be in or the reference in case you wanted to try and find one yourself and sort of just slowly but surely work through the case and maybe some wrist shots as well who knows I'm going to try and do this all in pretty much one take uh, because uh, it's going to take me ages otherwise of <laughs> editing um, so let's start with where it all started and where it all started is with this particular watch here and this probably started most of, not just the collection, but my uh, desire to try and fix watches and try and restore the cases and things. Uh, I have a, an abrasive background. It's a, it's a business that I'm in currently, so I kind of know what's required to uh, clean um, stainless steel. And this particular watch, which is a 6119 uh, movement, uh, the reference that I can't quite see is... Uh, a 5431. Hopefully, you can see that just up here. And if we go to the bottom here, the first number is a two, and that's going to tell me that this is 1972. If you do want to find out the uh, Seiko age, I'll leave a link down below to a company called uh, Watch Sleuth, and you can type in the various numbers on the back of the case here, and it'll give you an estimated date of its manufacturer. Now, then, the reason I bought this one is because. It's a 1972 and 1972 is my birth year and I was on eBay one day and I saw that this was advertised as 1972, didn't know much about Seiko's at all uh, and I bought it and uh, it needed a bit of work, it needed a new crystal which is acrylic and the case had seen better days and I thought well this is my first watch so why not have a go at trying to restore it. Uh, so I didn't know anything about movements at that point uh, but I knew how to take the, the remove the, the movement which I did. And basically with this one, I'll see, I have got the odd photograph of this, which I'll put up now. And you can see what it looks like. There you go. And uh, all I did was recreate the brush finish by using various things, uh, which again, you can see in my, uh, if you look at my videos on this channel, you'll see how I've done a lot of these sort of restorations. So it was a brush top. It was a polished sides. Again, that doesn't come out very well on the camera. And then I, completely tried to restore the bracelet. And this was my first attempt. I was really pleased with how it came out. It's quite a cool looking retro watch. And this is what got me into Seiko. And we can put this on. He says, there we are. And that's what it looks like on the wrist. And I've done quite a few of these since. I've done this for some members of the group and some other people who've got very similar watches. And uh, they always come out really, really well. Now, when I bought this, uh, it wasn't running very well. Uh, it did run to an extent. And I thought, well, I better buy a donor. And I bought this. Now, okay, it didn't have this weird rubber strap that I put on it. And the case was completely battered. And I'll put a picture of it. Oh, no, I don't think I've got a picture of this actual one, actually. So uh, it was, it seen better days. And I thought, well, I'll just buy it for the sake of buying it and maybe using some of the parts. And what happened was this, this was okay in the end. Um, so I stripped off what was left of the gold plating on this and uh, polished it up because it's brass underneath. And then once I'd polished the brass, I sprayed it with um, some clear coat, sort of stuff that they put on car paint uh, to stop it from tarnishing again and sort of put it away. I found, well, I found this rubber strap and I cut it because these are 10 mil lugs. Um, and I tried to wear it, but it didn't really look right, to be honest with you. Um, However, this watch then went on to be quite significant in its own right because this was the first watch I ever serviced. 
I was determined that I would get it to run and it wouldn't run at all. It would run maybe two seconds or three seconds. And I, at this point, I'd already joined a, a forum called Risk Sushi, which again, there's a link down below. And it was a normal conventional internet forum. And I got to know quite a few members in there. And one in particular, a guy called Guy, uh, talked me through it uh, one night. I'd got my tools out and I sort of disassembled the watch fairly easily, taking lots of photographs as I went along. And then once I disassembled it, building it was a whole new can of worms, really. Uh, and I had lots of questions and I kept on putting them in the forum with a few photographs. And the guys there helped me out and advised me what I should do. And kind of from that moment of when this particular watch ticked for the very first time under my own hands, uh, I was hooked. And this <laughs> that you can see there is a result of this watch and this watch. So pretty impressive, really. And that's how it all kind of started for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through the box, probably from the bottom to the top. Um, no particular order, really. Let's just sort of motor through them. Uh, some are more recent than others. And let's just sort of show you what I've got. Um, so I'm going to start with this one here because it's loose. Uh, that's all. And this is an interesting watch because what I've done here is I call it my half and half. So I was trying to demonstrate in pictorial sense for my website uh, what I what anybody is able to do with a bit of effort um, so this watch was all battered like it is on this side all the way over so I just put a bit of masking tape right down the middle and I restored the whole thing so I cleaned up the crystal I put some brush finish on here and then I repolished all of the sides there so I kind of call it my half and half watch uh, I never needed to service it it ran quite well what is a bit unusual about this one is that if I just move the hands at the moment, the um, it has this sort of five shield down here on a stamp. And I still don't know to this day whether that is original or not, because I have seen this model uh, in exactly the same sort of brown burst dial. Um, so I know the watch is legit, the movement's correct, but I've never seen it with this on the bottom here, hopefully you can see that a bit better now. So I don't know whether that was an after thing or whether that was just something that Seiko did. Okay, so the reference on this one is uh, 70095010. I've got a few of these or a few types of these. Again, I know it's a 70s watch and because it's starting with seven, it's 1977. So that's that one. Let's just bob onto the so the next one straight away and what we have here is quite an interesting one so i bought this uh it's it's a smallish watch but it looked absolutely mint in the photographs the owner said doesn't work uh, so i bought this i didn't have the this, this mesh strap as well incidentally i put that on uh, as an after thing and i bought it and sure enough it didn't work because the uh, mainspring had snapped on it so i just literally changed the barrel. I had a, had a spare, put it in, and uh, never needed to service the watch. It ran absolutely perfectly fine from there. The reference on this particular one is uh, a 6309 uh, 5810 from 1973. All of these watches, incidentally, can be found on my, uh, my website, uh, www myretrowatches.com. So you, uh, there's a little write up on every one of them uh, as I go along. So if you do want to look at up there as well for more reference, you can do. And I won't do the strap up on this particular one, but that's kind of the, the look that you get. Very nice watch. Uh, do like this one. So let's put that to one side and move on to this one. This one is one of my favorites, really. Uh, as you can see, it has this lovely iridescent blue dial. And this watch is in absolutely mint condition. I have touched this nothing. I've done nothing at all. I may have just sort of given it a light, a light polish with some, well, just some small polish, but nothing, nothing major. So this is how it came. It cost me an unbelievable forty pounds, um, and I was skeptical because the photo on eBay at the time didn't look too great. Um, but I took a chance, and I'm really glad I did. Uh, this, incidentally, let's see if we can get that in the light. I can't see that very well. Here we are. So it's a 7019 movement, which is a particularly favorite one of mine. 
and that's a 5090 and that's from 1978. All original, sign clasp, everything. And the way the light does play with that dial is really good. You can kind of see it here, I mean, artificial light at the moment, but it is sensational, this particular watch. Really, really, really do like it. So we're gonna move on again to the only one in here that is quartz. So this uh, I bought very recently at a watch fair. Uh, it needed a new crystal and I completely refurbed everything. So I put the new crystal in it. I've repolished the, the bezel here. I put the, uh, the, the uh, brush finish on the case top here and polished the sides and then did similar with the bracelet. So I've uh, brushed the edges and polished the center, which I think is original to be fair. Again, it's got a sign clasp, which I've not finished incidentally. Uh, but I kind of liked it because it's got an interesting blue dial, a bit iridescent again, and I can't get it in the right light, but it's got a bit of sort of texture to it. So you can kind of see it there, some sort of vertical lines. Uh, so it's pretty cool, this watch. I don't know much more about it than that. Um, I think it cost me ten pounds. So I couldn't. I couldn't resist it for that price. Uh, the crystal, incidentally, was <laughs> was minimal. I think it was like two pounds for a new crystal. Uh, the reference. Have we got a reference that we can see on camera? Uh, um, it's down there, isn't it? So what does that say? Is that four three four three three six. Well, hopefully you guys may have seen it. Uh, it is on the website again. I want to rattle through these because obviously there's quite a lot. So moving on, I'll actually take this one because I bought this at the same watch fair. Really nice one, this one. Uh, it has a sort of a matte dark blue, grayish dial to it. Uh, polished indices with little black markers inside to match the, the black lines in the hands here. Uh, Delightful little watch. Uh, all this needed was a new uh, balance. The hairspring on it was completely tangled uh, beyond repair. And I had a spare, so I put the, the spare in and it runs fine. At this moment in time, I've not restored any part of this case. It's also not on its original bracelet either. This, this came with it, but it's not the original. Uh, really do like it and it's quite an old one this one so we have where are we so it's a 7005 7005 incidentally is just a, a date only not day date and let's get that in focus it's an 8040 and it's from 1970 so it's quite early for, for me at least um, delightful little watch again didn't pay I bought two watches for 20 pounds uh, and this was one of them. So again, maybe 10 pounds. You can't believe that, can you really? 10, 10 UK pounds for a 17 jewel automatic movement from 1970. You know, great stuff. Right, I've got two of the same watch here. Um, and these came, I used to buy a lot of job lots of watches and I bought these, these were really bad. Uh, but I like this green dial, uh, but it was in pretty poor condition. Uh, if I've got a photo of this one, I'll put it up uh, on the screen now. Uh, it had no uh, bracelet. I had to source some bracelets separately, which came from the Philippines, which I think is where the watch came from, actually. And, you know, I kind of cut my teeth on all of these ones, so some of them are better than others. I fit a new crystal. I was very fortunate to find a, an original Seiko crystal for this. Uh, and then I've refinished the sides and the, the edges here was very challenging because not only are these uh, sort of a hexagonal shape but the sides are actually sloped as well so to try and keep these lines and certainly these bottom lines here without trying to over polish uh, was very 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 challenging indeed some of the marks you might see there incidentally are my fingerprints rather than anything else um, but a really cool watch got my favorite roman numerals uh, uh, day wheel there as you can see English and Roman numerals I particularly like those the reference on this one is a 6309 uh, 5650 from 90 what well it says I think it's 1971 one of these it might be this one or this one I can't remember has the wrong case back uh, so uh, I might be telling you some erroneous information 
Uh, this one was a bit more fun uh, in the sense that I'd already got the watch and then I found another donor that I needed to put this little blue border in. Uh, similar thing, new crystal, polished it up again. Once again, if I've got a photo of this one, I'll put it up now. If I haven't, it's not in the video. Um, pretty much the same as the, the other watch. And again, I've got a, they, these are original bracelets. It hasn't got the right clasp on this one, but I do buy job lots. There's a guy in the Philippines who sells Seiko bracelets by, I think you buy six for $20 delivered. And it's a bit of potluck on what sort of condition they're in. Um, so let's just see what this one says on the back. A lot of these, incidentally, I polish the back up as well a little bit just to give it a bit of shine. And where are we? So this is a 6319, which means it's the higher jeweled movement. And it's a, a 6020. So I think actually this one is more accurate in its case back than the other one off the top of my head. Um, the website might tell me a bit more than that. Okay, so there's that one. Moving on. One of my personal favorites. Um, this got a bit of a story to it. I think this was probably my second Seiko to buy. It wasn't on this bracelet. It was on like a weird mesh thing. Uh, it was absolutely awful. So I'll put some photos up now because inside was full of DNA. It was gross to be honest with you, but I cleaned it up nevertheless. And then I've polished the sides and replicated this sort of ground finish on the top. The acrylic crystal so it's quite easy to restore the acrylic crystal sourcing the bracelet trying to find this original bracelet which has got these sort of nice angles on them took me ages but i found a guy in serbia who uh, has some bits and pieces and i emailed him and he was more than obliging to sell me the original bracelet which was great and uh, that sort of completed this particular watch of which i've had this for maybe two years and i only serviced it a few months back actually um, I love this sort of two-tone dial that it has. Quite a few Seikos have this, and you'll see them in this in this collection here now. Um, so the movement I know is a 6119, and the model on this is a 5520, and this is from 1975. But a really, really nice watch. Wears really well, in my opinion. Um, I just like the way it's, it's kind of like symmetrical. It's all nice the same size bracelet and again the light plays with that dial all the time so really 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 nice very special watch to me that one one i'll never be letting going uh we'll pick this one as the next one at random uh another watch fair find i think it's uh, yeah i did i didn't service this one it needed some parts but i can't remember off the top of my head what parts it was needed i haven't polished the case haven't done anything other than put it on the the uh strap that i've got here uh very nice uh very sort of clean gray black dial uh that does have a little bit of uh, texture to it although you can't see it in this light i'm trying to show you there uh again this was another 10 pound fine couldn't believe it uh it, the guy well it wasn't running and i got it home and took it off uh, took, took the back off and there was a few parts missing and that's why it wasn't running and typical fashion got uh, spare parts put the spare parts in fired up first time quite a nice looking watch I've got a few of this type of shape and that's sort of how it looks on the wrist um, but overall this is in remarkably good condition and the uh, movement on this one is a 7025 uh, 5000 from 1976 there we are. Now then, on to another personal favourite, and uh, one I've done a whole series of videos on this particular, well, it wasn't this particular watch, it was somebody else's, but exactly the same one. This is a Seiko DX, and DX means that it's a 6106 movement, and that also means that it's got hacking. So it's got a little lever in there to, to hack the uh, second hand to stop. So you can set it a bit more accurately. Absolutely beautiful blue dial, uh, really iridescent again. Uh, the hands are in really good condition. There's, there's no rot on this at all, but it was in a really, really sorry state when I got it. And I'll put a photo up now of what it looked like. Um, and as you can see, it was pretty poor and it was a 
you know, just needed a lot of work, I think, and a new crystal as well. Um, but I cleaned it all up. I've given it a service. I repolished the sides and brushed the top because this is the same case as the, the first watch I ever did. Um, and obviously refinished this bracelet uh, as well with just like a brush finish. But I really, really do like this one. Again, it wears well. Anything with a blue dial is always going to be a winner. There we are. Moving on again, choose this one. This is a fairly recent purchase. And this one got the full works. So it's got this lovely sort of blue burst linen dial. Uh, and again, this needed quite a lot. Uh, it, uh, so I'll put a picture up now. Uh, the picture probably makes it look okay, but it didn't have some significant work put on this. First of all, it had a new crystal. It's an aftermarket crystal. It's not Seiko, but it's got this nice beveled edge. I then repolished the uh, bezel itself, uh, brushed these top, which is pretty standard on Seikos, and polished the sides, and then did something very similar with this bracelet, which is original. Uh, it then needed a complete and utter uh, overhaul in the movement, so it's had a full service, and it really is something special, this one. Again, it's, that, it's the iridescence of that blue dial that does it all. And to wear it, it's quite a big watch, but one of my particular favorites has to be said on that one. And I can't remember the reference. So the reference on this one is, it's a 7009 8081 from 1976. I can't remember what I paid exactly, it wouldn't have been any more than 30 pounds tops on that one. Uh, so another really good find. Another similar type of watch is this one. And this came in a job lot actually. I bought a massive job lot of Seikos and unbelievable what was in there. There were some digitals, there were some rare things. And this one was sitting there as well. And I was set to um, restore every single one of them, which I practically did. There was one or two that I couldn't because there were parts and, and one that I've still got that I haven't got a case back for, so I haven't done. Uh, but this was one of them. Uh, very nice, clean watch. Again, I've had to put the, a new crystal in, probably the same crystal as the other one. Uh, done the polishing of the bezel and the side. And I don't think I touched the bracelet on this one particularly, uh, but again, it had a full service because it needed the full service to get it going. It's quite a classy dress watch. As you can see, the hands there are absolutely perfect. Uh, it's not as old. Uh, I can't quite remember. I think this is 87 from memory. Uh, somebody might be able to correct me. So the, the model itself is a 7009 3040 possibly from 87. But again, very nice. That's what it looks like on the wrist. So I have got quite a lot more to do uh, and we'll be ending part one fairly soon. So we'll do a few more uh, and we'll do this one because this is another good favorite of mine. Uh, this needed absolutely everything doing to it. It didn't even have the bracelet. It took me quite a while to find one that was original and would fit. I had to utilize the guys in the group and all my contacts to, to look and search through the world as it would seem to find uh, something that was going to be good enough. And we've got kind of like a, a dark blue burst iridescent um, color to this one. Really nice raised indices. Um, and it had, again, a new crystal, as you can see. I think this one actually was an original crystal, come to think of it. Uh, a new uh, polished bezel, sorry, and brushed and polished on the sides. So all the usual things as one watch has decided to just fall on the floor, which is disastrous. And the uh, reference, let's see if we can get that on camera for you guys. It's gonna be over this side on the top there. So it's 6119, 
5450. And that's from 1972, so another birth watch for me on that one. Okay, let's do a few more. Uh, we're on 25 minutes, according to my uh, thing here. So let's make it up to 30 minutes, a full half an hour on these. This is an absolute gem of a, or the most retro one you can probably get. Uh, it's quite a high model. And this came in the job lot that I bought. Uh, so this is a Seiko Actus SS, and it's the 25 joule uh, version which is, I think, the highest jewel count they did on these uh, 6106 movements. So it's kind of like high mid-range. And it's got this faceted crystal, which hopefully you can kind of see there. I've been unable to find a replacement for this one yet. Uh, and it's also got the, the Japanese um, day wheel there as well. The dial has got some quite interesting iridescence with some texture as well. So it looks like squares. Trying to get that in the right light for you. Perhaps you can see it there. So it's got a lot going on. It's a very, very busy watch. And then it's got this really mad bonkers uh, bracelet, all original. And all I've done with this one is I've given it a good service and a pretty light polish, really. Um, I didn't want to go over the top because there's lots of angles, as you can see. And these are going to be really, really tricky to do. But I gave it a light polishing over just to bring it back up again. Definitely one of my favorites. And I'll put that on so you can see what that one looks like. And there we are. Incidentally, if you can hear some tapping in the background, it's just raining. It's typical in England for summer. It's pouring with rain right now uh, once again. And that might be coming through on the microphone. Let's choose this one next. This has got a beautiful iridescent dial. And the light in here doesn't do this justice. It really is quite something special. And this was a massive project. It was a real beaten up thing. As you can see, the dial's got some damage on there as well. Um, but I wanted to see if I could, I could do it. It needed some donor parts, which took ages to find. Um, but, and I polished the case. The, the case was appalling, absolutely appalling on this. So it is slightly rounded, so not one of my best works, but then You've got to learn by practice, haven't you? But I resurrected this from, from sheer death. So it's still a really poignant watch for me. Hopefully I've got some photos which I can put up for you now. And I've then found a bracelet, a Seiko bracelet to go on uh, because it didn't actually have one on it. Uh, but again, you know, because it's the Actus and it's the SS, it's a high jewel one, it's a 23 jewel. So it's it's, you know, again, a better model, if you like, a more higher up model. So the reference on this, if we can see it, because it's getting trickier and trickier with the bracelets in the way. I know it's a 6106. And I can't, I honestly can't read that. 8680. I'm trying to read it through the, the camera here, so it's not, uh, not showing it well enough for my eyes. Right, okay, uh, this one will do. Uh, this, I still got, this is still work in progress. This was another job lot that I bought and it was a real, real, real wreck, this particular one, but I decided to try and have a go at it anyway. Uh, it's got a really nice dial, as you can see, it's sort of textured, uh, but there is some damage to it that you probably can't see, which is around the center. It's like a hand has touched the dial as it's been going around and it scratched it. Uh, and the hands are, are rotted a bit as well. Uh, but I, this was one of my early ones, so I was still cutting my teeth, and I polished everything on this, and as I've later found out, these are actually sort of ground. So at some point, I am actually gonna put the right finish back on this, just for the sake of it. It possibly would have also had a faceted crystal, um, because I've seen other members in the group with this sort of watch, although albeit a different uh, movement number, and these have got faceted crystals on it. But this I bought, I think it was like five watches for 20 pounds or something. So, you know, it was just a project to learn. And like everything, once they get, you spend hours on them, they become part of you and become part of your collection. Uh, and I fitted it obviously to this nice little blue strap to complement it. Um, 
and what have we got? So it's a 6319, so it's again the higher jeweled uh, part of the, you know, it's the same as a 6309 movement, just got more jewels in it, that's all. Uh, 7000, uh, 1977. So pretty cool watch nevertheless, and I do wear that one from time to time. So I'm going to sort of call it halfway there because um, that's uh, 30 minutes of recording and hopefully you guys actually will watch this video to the end or maybe in stages, who knows. Um, so if you have watched it and you liked it, please, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, it means a lot to me and also leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think about these collections so far, which one might be your favourites. Uh, ask me any questions you want. I do read all the messages and I do try to reply to as many as I possibly can. Uh, so thanks very much for watching subscribe if you haven't already don't forget to check out my website and don't forget to check out the instagram of the same name as well so i'll catch you in the next video thank you